This is John Blair, one of our local uh, leading authorities on, on energy and, and the environment. Well, thank you, Brad. Uh, okay. Governor, I'm so happy that you're in Evansville. Of all the politicians that I have come to understand and know in my 61 years, you are my hero. <laughs> You have exhibited more courage and conviction with the battle that you went through in your recent legislative session and the, what your environmental agency did uh, to precipitate that battle, withstanding vicious attacks from private industry, from the other side for sure, uh, having to veto a bill at least two times, if I recall. Well, I welcome you to the area which is the largest concentration of coal-fired power plant capacity in the entire world. Uh, Brad just picked that up, uh, shows a map of some of those power plants. As a result of that concentration of coal-fired power plants, we failed to meet the health standard for fine particles and ozone here locally. So I have two questions. I guess I ought to explain why, why she's my hero. She vetoed two bills that, that were going to allow a new coal-fired power plant to be built in western, western Kansas uh, after her agency turned down a new proposal for a coal-fired power plant, uh, I think it was in late 2007. So I have two questions. Have you communicated your feelings about this subject to Senator Obama? And the second one, and probably more important, what advice would you give to local politicians as to how they can stand up for public health and environment against the huge money pressures the coal lobby exerts? Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate your um, tag of being a hero. Um, we did have a um, ferocious battle, and um, I'm not sure I'd recommend it to anyone. <laughs> right away, but I don't think there's any question that what is missing in this country, and it's one of the reasons I am so enthusiastic about an Obama presidency, is a comprehensive energy strategy. We need a national plan, uh, because right now what's happening is a state at a time is trying to make rules and laws that, um, frankly, are often disadvantage us one at a time, cannibalize our assets and move them elsewhere. So absent a clear set of rules, we're missing not only um, a, a clear lens to the future cost of carbon, and I think that does change the landscape. If we have a cap and trade system, people can make some decisions about other assets, but it also is locking down what I see as enormous amounts of private capital who are eager to invest, but they don't know what the rules are. And so they're reluctant to make investments. I mean, right now, and I'm sure the Congressman um, can tell you, right now, pending in the House is the expiration of the um, production tax credit for wind, for instance, and solar. Um, we know what's happened because it's been allowed to expire twice in the past decade. When it expires, projects plummet. Now, we're a state um, that I like to remind people uh, that even when our legislature isn't in session, we're the third windiest state in the country. <laughs> and we have enormous assets through that um, corridor of the plains where the wind blows all the time and it is a great asset to harness and produce electricity. Uh, but frankly, we're trying to do that on our own. We have no help from uh, the federal government right now to build transmission lines, which are essential to get the wind from where it blows to the marketplace. We have no help um, with this erratic policy that's in one day and out the next day. That's wind in Kansas and in Indiana. That's uh, biodiesel and ethanol. It's about harnessing solar power. It's about creating some energy independence as well as uh, paying attention to what's happening with our environment. So uh, Senator Obama has a very comprehensive strategy. One of the initiatives is to accelerate dramatically the research and development on coal capture, carbon capture and sequestration to see if we can take it to market, if that is really gonna work as a strategy because we have huge amounts of coal in this country. It could be a huge asset to our energy independence 
if we can find a way to actually develop clean coal. The industry uses that term on a regular basis. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist. So what we need is a bridge strategy, I feel, of harnessing our renewable assets, putting investments, as Senator Obama has suggested, in energy efficiency. The cleanest, cheapest energy we use is energy we never use in the first place. We have great low-hanging fruit with retrofitting office buildings, with developing building standards that work, with building grids that make sense. And frankly, those are jobs you can't outsource. You can't have somebody offshore um, renewing energy efficiency standards in buildings. So his proposal to put $150 billion into research and development over the next 10 years into energy efficiency, clean and renewable energy assets gives us an opportunity in the next decade to make a big pivot from where we are now. So I think Senator Obama is very aware of this issue. He's watching it all over the country, and he has a proposal really to make a change. John McCain has voted seven times against everything from renewable portfolio standards to production credits and continues to maintain that posture. So again, we have a very different policy strategy of, of how we become energy secure and energy independent. But thanks for asking.